when I close the door, I start to paint. Artist Barbara Kisilkova's works were being showcased at the Noble Gallery in Oslo. But two of her paintings were stolen right off the walls. The thief, Carl Bertil Norland. Because one of the paintings had a deep personal meaning for Kisilkova, she took matters into her own hands. The Czech artist managed to track down Norland, but her search didn't end there. She was determined to find the answer as to why he committed such a crime. Then in another twist, she asked Norland to sit for a portrait. And an entirely unique criminal victim relationship was born. In The Painter and the Thief, director Benjamin Ree zeroes in on this highly unconventional relationship. Ree says Norland is part of a, quote, great tradition of art robberies, and that his inspiration for the documentary was ripped directly from the headlines. The final result is what is being described as a raw look at how two people from different paths of life connect in a world that pits them against each other. Reviews underlined the movie drama-like quality of the film, which stems out from the dynamic interaction of its two leads. Critics are championing how the painter and the thief, at its core, paints a portrait of compassion and forgiveness. The feature to comb the World Cinema Documentary Special Jury Award at the Sundance Film Festival. And it's now being tipped as a contender for the Oscars come April. Let's welcome Benjamin Ree, the director of The Painter and the Thief. Hi, thanks a lot for joining us on Showcase today. It's lovely to talk to you. So, I just want to start with ob the obvious question here, which is, how did the idea come to you? Was it happening before you wanted to film them or when did you become a part of the process? I was actually researching art robberies. And in Norway, we have a great tradition for art robberies. And this uh, story was on the front newspapers in Norway. So I immediately took contact with uh, Barbora, the painter, and I began filming. And at that point, she had already met the thief in court and walked up to the thief and asked if she could paint him. So that was the beginning of the story. Mm -hmm. But that happened without your involvement, right? Because I remember in the film, it was only uh, just the voice, the sound bite. That's correct. So before I came along, a friend of Barbora had filmed her a lot, documented her uh, art life, uh, her paintings being made. We had surveillance footage that caught the, the thieves on tape. Mm -hmm. And we also had the, 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 the courtroom recordings from their first meeting. So I began filming the fourth time they met. I got access to begin filming The Painter and the Thief. Okay, Benjamin, for everyone who is involved in making uh, films and especially documentary movies, I think one of the greatest aspects of your movie is that it all felt so natural and, um, and so genuine. So I wonder how the filming process was for you. How did you ensure that everything just went on and unfolded so naturally? Uh, this uh, film actually began as a short documentary because when I began filming, I did not know anything where the story might end up. Uh, and then there were a scene that kind of changed everything. And that was when Karl Bakhtil, the thief, saw himself painted for the first time. You know, this is a really tough guy. He's got a lot of tattoos, a criminal, been eight years in prison. And when he see, saw himself painted, he began crying. And he cried for five minutes. Uh, and after filming that scene, we realized that this is not going to be a short documentary anymore, uh, but we're going to uh, try to make it <laughs> a feature documentary. And then uh, our goal was, of course, to try to be there in all of the decisive, crucial moments of the two main subjects' lives. Um, and we were, of course, very fortunate also that they gave us access. Of course, we had to build trust with these two people. Um, and they gave us access to film them in really crucial life and death situations. Okay, um, I want to ask you how much of an involvement you had in their relationship, because obviously something very unusual happens, and I think an audience 
might wonder, a member of the audience might wonder about whether this is just happening for the camera's sake. I think that to have a camera there present in all these moments will always affect and influence the people we film. Uh, some use the term fly on the wall, uh, describing documentaries like it. I, I don't think it's a fly on the wall, mm -hmm. it's more like an elephant in the room. <laughs> Just to have the camera present will always affect the people we film. But it's uh, then again difficult to say how much it affects what they do and what they say. But again, you know, Barbura, her kind of artist uh, project was to uh, paint uh, the thief. And of course, that changed both of their lives. Yeah. And in the same way, I think also to have the camera there also changed uh, both of their lives in a way. I, I don't know uh, to what extent. Yeah, so even if it happened for, uh, for, let's say, the elephant in the room, the camera, I have a feeling that it was really healing for both of them, this kind of relationship. What is your experience and what do you think about how this relationship affected their lives? This film is about what we humans do in order to be seen and appreciated and what it uh, takes of us to see others and help others. Uh, I think that um, having the camera there was a motivating factor for them to, to, to maybe change their lives. But, I, but again, it's difficult to say. Uh, I'm proud to say now that uh, both Barbura and Kalbakil are doing great today, <laughs> both of them. Kalbaki the thief, he, in the film you see him as a kind of, um, not the kind of, but you see him as a drug addict. Uh, and today he is sober, he's not counting months anymore, but years of being sober, he's got the job. He recently asked me what does actually a person do at a normal job, and at an office. Uh, and Barbara is still painting, but she has sold a lot of new paintings because of the film. So in that way, I think the film has changed them. But I don't know like, what would happen if we weren't there with the camera. Yeah, well, it's never going to be possible to know that. But uh, nevertheless, thanks a lot for this movie. And congratulations on the awards that you've already won. And good luck with the Oscars journey. Thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today.